Hello? Back to office? Business casual? Hello there, my beautiful darling. Business casual sounds confusing for most of us. And that's because business too casual. Too many options. Unlike business formal, typically we're just talking about suits. So it's much like when you walk in a restaurant with only two things on the menu. Chicken breast or roast beef? Roast beef. Or a restaurant with 20 things on the menu. Fried calamari, braised short rib sandwich, seared tuna burger, slow roasted chicken tacos, maple glazed salmon, soy ginger pork ribs, old school pepperoni, grilled asparagus. I'm not sure. I need more time. When you're not sure what to wear for business casual, one rule of thumb is to wear structured pieces. A classic example is a blazer, casual outfit with a sweater top and a stretchy knit skirt. However, when you put on a black blazer, now this is an outfit appropriate for business casual. And that is because the blazer has defined shoulders and cinched waist. And all this is gonna add more definition to your silhouette. And that's a key to business casual. If you're still wondering, Chi, what do you mean by structured clothing? Think tailored pieces, such as the dress pants. These are from Liverpool, Los Angeles. Everything I'm wearing today, the link is down below. They are well tailored. They're fitted, but they're not too tight. It hugs your hips and your thighs, the bootcut cut shape. And this kind of cut is gonna make your legs look longer and leaner. The fabrics are not too soft or flimsy. This will make sure it holds its structure in place. And this is what makes you look professional at work. Pencil skirt is another good example of structured clothes. This one is a belted, midi length pencil skirt from Ann Taylor. This goes with almost everything in my closet and this can make any top look like a professional outfit. But there's so many different kinds of pencil skirts. Not everyone is good for business casual. For starters, you don't want your pencil skirt to be too tight. Like this one. This one is from Theory. I love this skirt. I had it more than 10 years ago. It's made of 100% wool. But after I had my son, this is one size too small. So when I wear this, I feel like it's stretching too much. If you notice your skirt is having these wrinkles, that is a sign your skirt is probably too tight. Besides, if your skirt is too tight, your panty line might be showing in the back. And none of this is good for your professional image. The length of your skirt is critical. You probably already know, you don't want your skirt to be too short at work. Your skirt should be at least knee length. If you go under the knee, like this one, this is a midi length, that's gonna be a safer bet. Sometimes when you are trying on the skirt, you are standing in front of the mirror. So it looks like your skirt long enough. However, you also want to make sure when you are sitting down, your skirt is covering enough. Otherwise, when you are in a client meeting, you might be doing this. Blouse is another staple for the workplace. You can wear a blouse with a pencil skirt or wear a blouse with a dress pant, both are classic combinations for business casual, and they can pass for most work environment dress code. But not all the blouses are created equal. There are so many different designs. These two are very similar and both are from Antater, but they are different. This one has a small V neckline, and this one has a much wider U neckline. Besides, this one also has sheer fabrics in the arms, so even though it's not showing my cleavage, if your work environment is more reserved, this one is a better choice. Sweaters, it depends. There are so many different types of sweaters, but in general, sweaters are not structured because of the fabrics, they're made of knits. So they tend to be flimsy by themselves. If you wear unstructured clothes with another piece of unstructured clothes, like in this case, I'm wearing a sweater top with a sweater skirt, well, this looks pretty casual. However, that doesn't mean you should stay away from sweaters in your work environment. Of course you can wear sweaters. You just need to pair a sweater with a structured piece of clothing. In this case, I'm wearing it with a pencil skirt. 
and I'm also adding a belt and more definition to my waistline. And now this is a good outfit for business casual. Can you wear jeans for business casual dress code? A lot of us is wondering about this. This really depends a lot on your industry. For example, I used to work for the financial industry. We have one day in a week, Friday. That's the only day we're supposed to wear jeans if you want to. The rest of the week, we are business casual, but not supposed to wear jeans. However, if you are in creative industry, for example, in music, in art, or if you work in retail, it's possible that jeans can be acceptable for business casual. Even if jeans are allowed by your work dress code, I will still be very selective about what kind of jeans you wear to work. Dark wash denim or black jeans, these two are safer bets because they are slimming. They can make you look better and that's good for your professional image. Besides, they can also make any outfit look more polished. I would not wear any jeans that have a lot of big holes in it. Besides, I would not wear baggy jeans because they just don't really look good on anybody. On top of that, baggy jeans, it looks way too casual. At the end of the day, business casual still means you can do business in the clothes you wear. When it comes to the business casual dress code, a lot of times we're wondering what colors are we supposed to wear. Traditionally, when we think about the workplace, we're talking about the neutrals, blacks, whites, grays, khakis. Those are safe, especially if you don't have a lot of time to get ready in the morning. I would say go with the neutrals because those are always going to work. But that doesn't mean those are the only options you can wear for business casual. Of course, you can wear other accent colors as well. This dress pants is a light blush color. I love it. This is from Express. If you don't have a lot of time to figure out in the morning, if this color goes with that, then I would suggest you throw on a neutral color. In this case, I'm wearing it with a black blouse. This is an easy way for you to wear add colors to your work wardrobe. Prints, you can also have a lot of options. Traditionally, plaid is a classic print for the workplace. And it's making a huge comeback as part of the preppy trend that has been going on for a couple of years now. On top of that, I also love Hans tooth. These are so super cute, but they're definitely work appropriate. This one is from Ann Taylor and I am loving it. I love to wear it with my brown pants, which is also from Ann Taylor. Your bags are super important for your professional outfit. This is when structure plays a critical role. The more structured your bags look, the more professional they will look. For business casual, you should have at least some structure in your bags. Some designs, such as the satchel bags, especially those with the top handles, normally these are pretty structured and that is what makes sure they can always hold its shape whether you're carrying them, walking down the street, or when you're going to a client meeting, you're going to put down your bag on the table or on the chair. And when do you know your bags don't have enough structure? The test is when you put them down on the table or on the chair. Some of the designs, some of the hobo bags or some of the big tote bags, it's okay when you're carrying them on your shoulder, but when you put them down, they cannot stand by themselves. And that's when you know your bags do not have enough structure. If you want to look good in professional outfits, you also want to make sure your bags are in proportion to your body size. This is especially critical if you happen to be short like me. I am 5'2". I used to live in Manhattan and a lot of times I am observing how people are dressed walking past the windows. A lot of times I noticed petite women, they are carrying gigantic bags. To be honest, I am guilty of doing that myself. Especially when you live in Manhattan, you have a lot of things to carry. So a lot of times we tend to go to really big bags and that look out of proportion to our body size. That doesn't look very good, especially if you are shorter like me. Sometimes it can look like you are really struggling with that. If you are petite like me, watch this video. The top five bag mistakes for petite women. Carrying a bag that is way too big for your body size, that is just one of the top five bag mistakes. 
What are the other four common mistakes that petite women like us are making? Watch this video, you will be surprised. 